Next, very important from banking point of view, we we I mean, if possible, you can take note also. Uh, we are going to talk about coverage ratios, especially important from banking point of view. Okay, so we'll have one, two, three, four ratios. One with service coverage ratio, two is uh, interest coverage ratio. Three is preference dividend coverage ratio and four is capital gearing ratio. And uh, this ratio, uh, everyone should take it very seriously because uh, whether you uh, interact with banker or whether you work in an organization, this is going to decide the long-term prospects of any organization. Whether you are going to take up any capital project or not is linked absolutely with this ratio called as debt service coverage ratio. To understand that, uh, let me take you to the Excel. And before that, uh, I just come back to the screen. Yeah. So there are some questions. I'll be answering the question once uh, this presentation part is over. Okay. And uh, with a special note to Shankar Narayan. Yeah. Now, uh, how to understand this debt service coverage ratio? Let me take you through an example. Let's say you are going to approach a bank for a, taking up a project. So let me give you the cost of project and means of finance. Let's say, yeah. means of finance, cost of project, okay? So your cost of project, let's say it demands uh, various assets, say plant and machinery, land and building, furniture and fixture, all this put together, you have to spend around say something like uh, 50, 50, 50, 150. Let it be in lakhs or millions. So it is 150. And you are going to fund this project. You have to fund this project. Let's say you are going to fund it with equity of 25%. It is 150 into 25%. 37.5 is coming from equity and balance is coming from term loan from bank. Term loan from bank and it is 150 minus 37.5 that is 112.5. So you have the same 150. Okay. Now with this project if you go and approach the bank, yes the bank would uh, evaluate all this they would go through the proper invoices, they would see whether the supplies are genuine, whether these missionaries and all would meet your requirement, technical viability. Then they would be interested in the economic and commercial viability. That is whether you will be able to sell your products in the market, whether you will get the revenue, whether you will make profits, whether the profits will be adequate to service the loan back to bank with interest. That is going to be their focus. And that's something which you have to pay ultimate importance because the look at here for the 150 million project, 112 is coming absolutely from the bank. So you should be in a position to understand what is their expectation and how that expectation can be met. So bankers would be interested in knowing whether your profits will be sufficient to repay this 112.5 million along with interest. So banker would be calculating what is going to be the interest every year, what is going to be the repayment every year. Let's assume that this 112.5 has to be repaid over a period of five years. So I'm going to have a small calculation now, follow closely. This is going to be repaid over a period of five years. So year one, two, three, four, five. So I'll say loan repayment. And we'll assume equal payments. That is 112.5 divided by five so every year, this 22.5 have to be paid. So that at the end of the fifth year, if you look back, you have paid total. You have paid total of 112.5. It means every year you have to pay interest also on this, right? So how this interest has been calculated? Let's do a small calculation now. We'll assume that uh, interest rate is something like say, Okay, so what I'll do, I'll have a small table here where we'll calculate the interest. Opening balance, I'll assume that loan was borrowed in the beginning of the year and in that year there is a repayment. What is the repayment amount? It is 22.5. So closing balance is 112.5 minus 22.5. This is 90. 
So let me arrive at what is known as average balance. Average balance is nothing but we can say it is uh, say 112.5 plus this 90 divided by 2. So this is going to be average balance and on this average balance let me apply interest at 10 percent. So 101.25 multiplied by 10 percent. So this is going to be the interest which I pay in first year. Now what will be my opening balance in the second year? Obviously this closing balance of first year 9. Okay. Again I have repayment of 22.5 in year 2. My closing balance will be 90 minus 22.5 which is 67.5. My average balance is 78.75 and interest 10 percent will be 7.88. Similarly if I calculate for the remaining 5 years this is going to be the situation and here I have what is my interest commitment for all the five years. It means bankers are going to be very particular about this. So here let me add the interest, add interest at 10 percent. That is this 10.125 for all the five years I have kept it and the total is 28.125. It means the bankers are going to be very concerned whether you are going to be in a position to pay this. So what is your obligation, total obligation every year? It is 22.5 plus 10.125, so 32.63 is your obligation in year 1. In year 2, so much, year 3, year 4, year 5, and they are going to expect a total repayment of 140.63 where they have sanctioned a loan of 112.5. Now, when banker would be happy? You have to pay 32.63. And this is including the principal and interest. If you want to pay 32.63, will it be okay if you have a profit of 32.63? Answer is no. Okay. Will it be okay if you have a profit of 40 in year one? Answer is again no. It means bankers are going to look at it a little differently. So how? Let me do this. Yeah. Banker would expect that you have a cash profit of at least 1.75 times of your obligation. It means bankers are going to expect your cash accruals. Technically we call it as cash accruals. They want that to be at least 1.75 times of this 32.63. If you are going to have a cash profit of 57.09, they would be happy. So in year one, they would be happy if you have at least this much. In year two, they should be at least 53. Year three, 49 year 4, 45, year 5, it is 41.34. It means if your obligation including the principal and interest is so much, you should have cash profits or cash accruals at least 1.75 times of obligation. So this is more or less a universal ratio. Of course, the bankers would dilute. They would dilute it to 1.5 to some clients depending upon the background and other things. But if you want to really get loan for this project, say the project like this and if you want to get really a term loan of 112.5 you should have a cash profit of minimum this much. So how do I get this cash accrual? That is very important. Cash accrual, let me put that here. How it is calculated? We will first take profit after tax because profit after tax is what should be considered. Tax is always payable. So with this profit after tax, we'll be adding back depreciation. Why we are adding back depreciation? Because it is a non-cash item. Then we'll also add back interest on long-term loan. Okay. So if you add these two, you would get the cash accrual. But we should also keep in mind that if any dividends are being paid, that should also be deducted. In that case, if dividends are paid, what we'll do? We will start from retained profit. Okay? We will start from retained profit, then we'll we'll take into consideration or directly you can here give the effect less dividend paid. Okay? So all this to be considered and only then you can arrive at what is going to be your cash accruals. Okay? So now this cash accrual should be at least fifty seven point zero nine in year one. 53.16 in year 2 and it goes. Okay, So this ratio is very important and not even a single project in this country would have happened without calculating this ratio. Okay, 
and many times bankers would insist 1.75 and of course there are cases the bankers would go to below level they've gone to 1.5 they've gone to 1.3 1.2 as well in certain cases but they had no other options but they were backed by some other guarantees some other securities okay so this ratio is very important number one the second ratio is interest coverage ratio and again this is the ratio which is very much liked by the bankers because uh, this ratio would communicate uh, say uh, how much times of profits are covering the interest let's say I have to pay interest of 100 let me give some number let's say I have to pay interest of 100 banker would be interested in knowing how many times their profit would cover this interest. It means basically I have to find out the profit before interest and taxes and we also add depreciation because it's a non-cash item. So profit before depreciation, interest and taxes would be taken. Let's say if my ratio is 400, sorry the amount is 400, then my ratio is going to be 400 on 100, the ratio is 4 times. It means my profits are covering the interest obligation 4 times. Here we are not starting with PAT, we are starting with PBDAT because uh, uh, tax is paid only on the profits after tax, after interest. Tax is paid only on the profits after interest, so we are taking profit before depreciation, interest and tax. Now if your PBDIT is say something like 500, banker would be more happy because the profits are covering five times their uh, revenue. This is their main revenue. But if your PBDIT is something like uh, 200, then bankers will try to stay away because uh, from this you have to pay interest and then you have to pay taxes, then owners will not carry anything, then no profit would go to long-term funds in the form of reserves and surplus, then there will be no contribution to networking capital and its impact will be no contribution to current assets and this business would eventually face a lot of liquidity strain. Okay? So that's the importance of uh, this interest coverage ratio. These two I am not focusing now, 